very much. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the scholars and the recipients tonight and congratulate them all. And uh, it was great to see Sheila E. up there performing and Ray. <laughs> Wonderful. I'd like to thank Mrs. Rachel Robinson. It was a real honor to meet you tonight, ma'am. Um, Mrs. Robinson's daughter, Sharon, and Mrs. Robinson's granddaughters, Sonia, Susan, and Meta. Chairman Greg Gonzalez, JRF board members, Mike Clementi, and JRF president and CEO, Della Britton Beza. Now, Jackie Robinson once said, life is not a spectator sport. If you're gonna spend your whole life in the grandstand just watching what goes on, in my opinion, you're wasting your time. Sports and music are some of the few examples that we have that act as a conduit to connect and relate on levels that sometimes feel unattainable or out of reach. On the surface, Jackie Robinson stealing home can seem like any player hustling 90 feet to help their team win. But at that moment, and every time he took the field, he was doing it for the kid listening on the radio. The athletes who came before him and for all the people who finally felt like they were being seen. Through the lyrics that I write and the music I sing, I too get that rare opportunity to interact with someone who may be thousands of miles away. Once again, there's a kid out there. He's listening on the radio. He just might feel that connection. And I have gotten that unique chance to connect and affect people's lives by simply doing what I love. But what Jackie Robinson was trying to convey was, don't stop there. Don't get complacent. Don't just start watching from the grandstand. As a kid, I never dreamed that I'd be standing before you accepting this or any honor or award. And as if I may tell you, my connection to philanthropy began through sports. You see, a long time ago, I co-founded an arena football team called the Philadelphia Soul. Now, I was very passionate to build a team, one that could win on the field, but I was also aware that in order to ingratiate ourselves to the city, we also had an opportunity and a responsibility to give back to the city. And as you may have heard in the video, one cold winter night, I was looking out of a hotel window, and I noticed somebody who was sleeping on a sidewalk grate. This image, which unfortunately a lot of us see on a daily basis, stuck with me. So instead of being just that spectator and watching from the grandstand, we got to work. We did our homework and we forged relationships, ultimately creating in 2005 the JBJ Soul Foundation, which aims to develop programs and opportunities that focus on the breaking of cycles of hunger, poverty, and homelessness, not just in Philadelphia, but in as many communities as we could touch. We wanted to make sure that when you look out your window or you're walking down your street and you see somebody who might be cold, hungry, and in need of help, well maybe, just maybe, we could help them find it. Over the last 15 years, the foundation has provided funding toward the creation of housing, ranging from emergency warming shelters in our home state of New Jersey, to permanent supportive housing across the country in places like Philadelphia, Detroit, New Orleans, Las Vegas, New York, Georgia, California. Working with our community partners, these projects have given shelter, housing, and hope to thousands of individuals and families, including some of the most vulnerable, such as the veterans that you've seen at the Walter Reed facility, which we partnered with Help USA on, and creating housing for youth with a focus on the LGBTQ community with organizations like Covenant House and Sister Mary's Project Home. But for us, housing was just the start. Early on, we learned that a roof over your head can disappear quickly if people aren't connected to the comprehensive services that they are so desperately in need of, such as food, medical care, and social services. That realization and the passion to help those who need it the most has shaped the way for the way that we decided that this project in 2010 led us to the creation of our shining program, the JBJ Soul Kitchen. Because now it is my honor to introduce the driving force behind our three JBJ Soul Kitchens, someone who understands that all of us have potential if given the opportunity and a warm meal. May I introduce you to 
our co-honoree and my wife, Dorothea Bon Jovi. Thank you. Thank you. It is truly an honor to be here tonight and to be recognized by the Jackie Robinson Foundation. The JRF scholars are so impressive. I barely graduated high school, and these kids are amazing. I'm, we should give them a big round of applause. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not comfortable accepting awards or standing in front of an audience, but I would like to take this opportunity to tell you about the JBJ Soul Kitchen. At the JBJ Soul Kitchen, we serve an in-need and paying customer. Some of our customers donate for their meals, while others, as part of their contribution, volunteer. The JBJ Soul Kitchen is not a soup kitchen. It's not a pay-what-you-can restaurant. This is not institutional or cafeteria-style food service. We like to call ourselves a pay-it-forward restaurant. Our paying customers are asked to contribute more than the minimum $20 donation to help offset the cost of volunteer meals. Our volunteer customers help us around the restaurant, washing dishes, busting tables, anywhere we need help. And everyone, no matter how they've, how they've contributed, has the same dining experience, often sitting together while they eat. They choose from a three-course menu served by a wait staff with cloth napkins and flowers on the table. This is a delicious, healthy meal served with dignity and love in a beautiful restaurant. We opened our first location in Red Bank, New Jersey in 2011. We opened our second location in Toms River, New Jersey in 2014 after Superstorm Sandy. Many were surprised that there were folks in our community going hungry or struggling with homelessness. But the face of hunger isn't always what we think. There is a large population of what we in the biz call ALICE, which stands for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, Employed. These are individuals and families who work and earn more than what is considered living at the poverty level, but still cannot afford the basic necessities of life. They cannot qualify for any government assistant, assistance, but struggle to make ends meet. About three years ago, we started hearing about student hunger at our local community college. We heard stories of students living in their cars and existing on free granola bars from their teachers. There have been several studies on student food insecurity, and the numbers were staggering. We know that education is a pillar of the Jackie Robinson Foundation, and we know that students can't succeed if they are hungry. We connected with a food service provider and are happy to announce that in September, we opened our third JBJ Soul Kitchen on the campus of Rutgers University, Newark, to address student food insecurity. <laughs> Now this is a place where I could give you a bunch of facts and figures and your eyes would glaze over and you'd order a few more cocktails. But I'd rather share a story about one of our volunteers at our Red Bank Soul Kitchen. Tony came and ate with us on and off for over five years. He would volunteer, sit, and eat. During that time, he lived in a trailer or with relatives or in his car or on the street. He suffered with mental illness and was on and off medication for most of his adult life. He passed away last spring at the age of 59. Our outreach coordinator, who worked with Tony, called to tell me. She mentioned that she saw his obituary, and in the photo, he was such a handsome young man. I asked her to send it to me. As I started reading it, I came across the name Anne Marcisco. I read that name five times. Anne Marcisco worked for our family for 10 years as our kid's nanny 20 years ago. Tony was her youngest brother. I called Annie. Annie, how are you? Not so good, she said. My brother passed away. I said, Annie, I knew your brother. He came to Soul Kitchen all the time. She said, I know. I asked, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't he tell me who he was? There was a pause, and I could hear the pain and shame in her voice as she tried to explain. But then she started to tell me how he was such a happy kid, how Tony loved music and played the drums, he went to trade school and became a plumber, and he was good at it. But then something happened. He changed. She started to cry, and so did I. But then I told her about the Tony that I knew, the one who came to Soul Kitchen. I told her how everyone knew him there and talked to him and helped him around the restaurant. I told her about the time he saw me, 
pointed and yelled across the crowded restaurant, hey, I had a dream about you last night. And everyone laughed. And then Annie started laughing. And I said how much he loved the food. And she said how much he loved to eat. And we laughed. And I told her that it was important that she knew that when Tony came to Soul Kitchen, he was treated with respect and kindness and was not bullied or teased. He was happy there, and she was happy to hear it. I will not forget the line of his obituary that said, his mental illness plagued his mind, but never his heart, which was as big as the moon. More important than serving food at Soul Kitchen, we create community. Yes, we are a place where people can access healthy food, learn about resources in their area, and get connected to services. But we are also a safe place where those in need can feel part of something and know that no matter what their physical or mental ability or socioeconomics are, they are able to contribute. We create a space where others who can give back can see, feel, and taste the impact they are having in their community. A good friend of mine summed up the Soul Kitchen like this, and it is my mantra. And although I didn't have the honor to know the great Jackie Robinson, I'd like to hope that he would have appreciated it. Everyone counts. Everyone deserves a chance. Everyone has a role to play. And we all do better when we help each other. Thank you for this amazing award. I am humbled to be mentioned in the great, with the great people here tonight. And thank you to my husband, who is empathetic, compassionate, and caring, and who's never been satisfied to just sit in the, in the grandstands. And today's his birthday. Oh. <laughs>